This is the Ernie, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do it in rec play, how you can do it in tournaments. So when you're on the court, your friends are like, wow, that was sick. And you're like, wow, that was sick. <laughs> Let's go. Today's video is brought to you by Selkirk. So when you play pickleball, one of the things you wanna do is be a threat on the court. You wanna take away options from your opponent. And so when they're playing against you, they can't go to as many spots. The ability to Ernie takes away options from them. So I got my friends, Tyler, JT, Zach, and we're gonna show you different reads with the Ernie. But before we get started, let me share this. What even is an Ernie? Well, an Ernie is when you run around or jump through or over the kitchen in order to get closer to the net so you can potentially put a ball away or gain the advantage in the point. So I wanna get closer to the net without violating the kitchen rules. As long as you land outside of the sideline, you're legal. You can't jump with your foot on the kitchen line. You can't land with your foot on the sideline. If you do that, both those things are illegal. But as long as you jump outside the kitchen line and land outside the sideline, you're good. Check mark, next play. Here's one rule you need to keep in mind because this is often a confusing point with players, right? Can you cross the plane of the net? Here's the ruling. If I make contact with the ball, on my side of the net, on my follow through, I'm allowed to cross the net with my paddle. I'm allowed to cross the net with my body. When I'm over here, I can't do anything distracting. I just have to get back on my side. If I go to Ernie and I make contact on their side of the net, that's illegal. You can't do that. If on your swing, go ahead and throw it up. I swing and I land and I hit the net, violation, you immediately lose the point, okay? So you can cross the net, but make sure your paddle doesn't touch the net before you get back over to your side. Here's the three main reads of when you might Ernie on the court. Here's number one. I call it the head down back foot Ernie. For this shot, the ball could either come from me to Zach for the setup, or it could come from Tyler to Zach. It doesn't really matter where the ball is coming from in this situation. What does matter is that as I'm trying to make the read and understand when to go Ernie, I'm looking at what Zach's position is. If Zach gets a down the line ball from me, boom, and Zach is caught on his back foot with his head down, that's a trigger for me to potentially go and Ernie. Okay, same thing if the ball comes from Tyler, Boom, gets caught in his back foot with his head down. That's a trigger for me to Ernie. Why? Well, if he's on his back foot, that means he's not on balance. And that means his next shot, it's probably gonna be a little bit more lofty. His head, put your head down, Zach, yeah. right? <laughs> So when Zach's head is down in that direction, a lot of times what happens is he loses peripheral vision. And when he loses vision of me, then I'm able to go. Yep, straight to me. Okay, good. Let's show the example from Tyler. Okay, now I gotta prep some way. I gotta prep my feet, right? If I'm standing way over here and I notice Zach, go ahead and get into the head down right? If I notice Zach's in that position, well, I'm not going to be able to jump the kitchen from here, right? So if I notice that's happening, I want to get closer to this sideline in order to prep myself to go and Ernie. There's two types of footwork. Here's level one footwork, okay? I like to, it's actually more of running around the kitchen. I'm going to step off my left foot, land on my right foot, plant perpendicular to the sideline and hit the ball. So it looks something like this. So it's Left, right, left, hit. That's level one footwork. Now, here's level two footwork. I'm actually gonna jump through the kitchen, which is totally legal as long as I jump from behind the kitchen line and land beyond the sideline. I'm gonna jump off my left foot and I'm gonna just basically act like Superman for a second, okay? Off my left foot and I'm gonna land probably right, left, but I'm not as concerned about how I land as much as I'm concerned about landing outside the sideline. So for the first read, the head down, back foot Ernie. On the other side, I was just talking about what you do if you're a right-handed player on the left side of the court. Now, if you're a left-handed player, everything is just flipped. But let's go back to the, the, the being a right-handed player on the right side. This is the primary read for when I use an Ernie when I'm on the right side, and it's still the head down, back foot. Okay, so it could either come again from down the line or it could come from Tyler cross court. So let's just walk through it. So I hit the ball here, boom. Okay, now JT's in that position, loses vision of me. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna have less reach. Cause when I'm on this side, right, it's harder. When I'm on, if I'm left-handed here, right, that's easier. Just like when I'm a righty on the other side, I have more length. So I would experiment with the footwork. I've done a little bit of both. Occasionally I will jump off my right, go left, right, boom. 
But another thing you might experiment with is just purely jumping off your left to get more distance out of the air. Right here, so I'm here. That's a different way. And that's how you might do it on the right side if you're a right-handed player. Okay, here's the second read. It's the split line Ernie. Here's what it looks like. Thinking. Uh, yeah! yeah! So here's the trigger. JT and I are diagonal from each other. This is one that doesn't often get taught, but it's one that if, if you have the athleticism to do it, it's one that you can get people on immediately because the most common pattern is if JT crosses in front of that line, his most common dink is to this location. Rarely does a player cross the line and hit it back to Tyler. So let's show that. This doesn't happen that often. Boom, right? Here's an example of me doing it against Tyson McGuffin. Watch how Tyson crosses over the line. I read it and then I jump through the kitchen to Ernie the ball. And notice this time that I wait until after Tyson makes contact with the ball before I make my movement to leap through the kitchen. Okay, boom. Ball goes to the middle. Okay, ball goes to the middle. Boom, pause. Okay, so I see JT immediately cross that line. The moment I see him cross, I'm thinking this is an Ernie opportunity. It's not gonna be every time, but if he hits the ball right there, I'm gonna use my ability to jump through the kitchen in order to get closer to the net, in order to be more dangerous, to be a threat, in order to try to win that point and gain the advantage. Yeah! <laughs> Here's the third read. The baseline drop Ernie. So I got Zach and JT back there who are about to serve. I got me and Tyler. Tyler's back there. So Zach's gonna serve it to Tyler. Tyler's gonna return it just to that, maybe in the middle, Tyler. It really doesn't matter whether the return goes to Zach or the return goes to JT. What I'm paying attention to is if their third shot, right, serve is the first, return is the second. If their third shot comes anywhere in my zone over here, I'm going to Ernie. Let's see what that looks like. Go ahead. Boom, okay. Yep. Good. So again, I don't care where the ball is returned. What I'm paying attention to in the read here is if either of them try to drop over to this corner, which is actually a really good idea because if they drop to this corner, right, they, I have less offense here. It's my backhand. I'm typically less dangerous, but if I have the athletic ability to jump through the kitchen, it takes away a spot from where they can drop the ball. So now they know they can't drop it there and I'm in their head. Zoom in on my face. You want to be in their head. So there's some nuance to this as well, right? There's other times where an Ernie may happen. If I ever see JT cross this split line, right? As they're trying to work their way in, for example, watch as Ben Johns crosses the split line here to drop that ball, right? I noticed that he crossed the split line, just like we talked about in read number two, the split line Ernie, right? Except he was farther towards the baseline. But when I recognize that he, number one, crosses the split line and number two, tries to drop the ball over to my backhand side, you see me jump through the kitchen and apply pressure as he hits the ball out. That was sick. Pro tip, here's the biggest mistake I made when I first started trying to earn more. I went too soon. If you go too soon, your opponent will recognize that you've already started to move, right? So you don't even allow them time to get their, for example, in read number one, get their head turned. And if you don't allow them time to get their head turned, they'll recognize that you're going and they'll put the ball in a position where you can't earn it. So what do you do instead? You wait until your opponent has made contact with the ball before you make your movement to earn okay? So watch this. Notice how I wait until contact is made by my opponent before I go. Wait until contact is made before I go. Good. That's how you earn it. Three different reads. Go try it. If you want to watch a video about the six double strategies every beginner must know, click this video right here. Right here. Put it right in front of JT's face. Put the video right there. Click the video. That's a wrap. Ah!